Good evening. Um, I would like to call the October 19th uh, Finance Committee me meeting to order. Uh, it is 7.04 p.m. And we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, we do have a quorum. We've done the pledge, and I'm on the wrong agenda. There we go. All right, so first I would, next I would like to open it up to public comment. If we have any um, comments, now would be the time. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, okay, well then our next order of business is the approval of last month's minutes, which were in everyone's meeting package. Um, they are the finance committee meeting minutes from September 28th. Um, hopefully everybody's had a chance to look over them. Does anybody have any edits, revisions, comments? Seeing none, uh, I would entertain a motion concerning the minutes from 92821. Uh, I move we approve the minutes of September 28th. It is moved by Chris Allen and seconded Second. by Dustin. Thank you. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, we have approved the minutes. So now we'll move to the bulkier, bulkier items. Um, if Madam Town Manager would like to come up, I don't know, Lynn, if you wanted to come up too, you're more than welcome. She said no. No? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> We already have one guy leave because he thought it was the Conservation Committee. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Good. So the next order of business, just uh, while Melissa's passing things out, our esteemed town manager, Melissa Rodriguez, will um, talk about uh, three issues. Um, this, an update on the Senior Center, a request pertaining to that, an update on the Stevens Estate budget, and an update on facilities master plan two. Is that right, Melissa? That's right. All right, we could take them, uh, unless there's objection, we could take them in any order you want. All right, well, we'll start with the senior center. Um, so in exciting news, since I saw you all last time, we have closed on the senior center and now own all of the property. Uh, it's very exciting. <laughs> um, and we actually have demolished the two buildings that were ours. Um, so the two duplexes that we had have both been demolished. Um, the brush in the back has been removed. The fence is up and we're ready to go forward um, pending this tonight. <laughs> so um, due to COVID, we do have some escalation, which we kind of expected. If you remember correctly, we actually bid this project out, not at this town meeting, but at the town meeting before that. And the contractor had basically held prices for us all this time we were working on closing, um, thankfully. <laughs> so it, we are ready to roll but we did see some overtures and I handed you a worksheet that basically explains what those overtures are. They are all basically related to materials, which isn't that shocking. We've been bidding out some other projects recently and have actually been throwing the bids out and not awarding them due to the kind of escalating costs that we're seeing, particularly in stale. Um, so the base bid for the entire project came in at $7.57 million. We had had um, six alternates that we were considering. We had planned on moving forward with five of the alternates. What we're going to do now, um, because of the escalations that we're seeing, one was the demolition cost, because there was some question on how we were gonna move forward with demolition. That ended up being $138,000, um, and the escalation cost of 740,000 total. So what we are asking to do is delete alternate two, three, and five, Alternate two and three are actually partitions that were gonna be used in a large room to break the room up. We'll still put the rails in, but we won't actually purchase the curtains. And to be honest, the new senior center director doesn't love the idea of the partitions anyway. Um, we have so much space in the building um, and there's so much rooms to program. And often, I don't know if you've ever been in a room where those partitions are pulled, but you really can hear what's happening in the rooms next to you. So they're not that conducive to, to actually running a program. Um, so she's not concerned about pulling those out. The third item, the 109,000 alternate five, is the generator. So the plan for the generator 
is to put it in the capital plan that will come to this Maytown meeting. So we'd remove it now, but they would continue to hold that price for us, which would be amazing because I don't even want to think about what it would cost us to bid out a generator today. Um, but they still would do the pad and they still would do all the conduits. So we still would have everything running to it. We just have to place the generator on. Um, so basically what we're looking at is an escalation of $575,782.48. And so we were kind of sitting here going, how are we going to do this? Um, and we were brainstorming and we remembered that, and I don't know for those of you that are not in the finance committee last year, we had had some debt fall off last year and we were really um, causing an effect. We wanted to hold that $600,000 because we didn't want it to get either gobbled up by operating, which can happen. Um, and we also didn't want to let it just fall off and not raise it because we knew we had facilities master plan two coming and we knew we were going to need that capacity and it's $600,000. So it makes perfect sense. It's actually the exact amount that we have for the escalation. So we can't get to that money right now because it's in our debt budget. So what we're asking to do is to borrow from the finance committee reserve account. So we have two transfers we're gonna ask for tonight. I'll talk about this one first, the other one's small. We'd like to borrow from the finance committee reserve account and then transfer it back in one of two ways. And I don't know, Lynn, if you wanna opine on that, but I would think we'd probably just do a article at town meeting to make a transfer from the debt line item in our, this year's fiscal year budget back to your finance committee reserve. Actually, I think we would prefer to do it at the end of the year. The 3%? Even better. So under the Modernization Act, we wouldn't even need to do that. So can, well, can we just... So we do yeah. have some new members. You do. So if we could just... Explain the finance committee reserve? Yeah. Okay. I... So two years ago, my first budget here, we created the finance committee reserve. And basically what the finance committee reserve account is, is it's like our emergency money. Um, something happens we didn't know about when we made our budget. Um, snow and ice is a perfect example of that. Some years snow and ice is $450,000. Sometimes snow and ice is $2 million. But it's a place we can go to when we have an emergency. And the reason that we created the Finance Committee Reserve Account is because we wanted there to be transparency in the process so that you would all know, hey, something came up that we didn't budget for and we need help. Can you help us budget it for it or you help us fund it? So we have that account. Uh, we have $1.5 million in that account. And in order to get that money, the Finance Committee has to vote to allow that transfer. So tonight we're asking for two transfers. One is the $575,782.48, and the other one is $25,000. And I'll explain this one as well. So the fire department had asked our state legislatures um, for $50,000 for a pickup truck. So we have um, a pickup truck that we had gotten rid of. We actually auctioned it off this year. We got $7,700 for the pickup truck. Um, it wasn't running, it was rested out. Um, and we got $25,000 for a pickup truck <laughs> and it expires June 30th. And we don't really have a way to fund it if we don't use the Finance Committee Reserve account. Um, I hate to give away $25,000, especially knowing that we got $7,700 for our, the trade-in. So we're asking for the $25,000 from the Finance Committee Reserve to fund the rest of that fire truck, fire car, fire pickup truck. It's good. And the issue that we're having, uh, it's actually really interesting, is that you can't get vehicles. So we are in the same kind of spot as the rest of the world when we're trying to get vehicles. And we've been told, we all order our public safety vehicles on something called the MHQ. And they've said, we're never going to be able to get you a pickup truck by June 30th. It's not going to happen. And somehow, Liberty Chevrolet has one red pickup truck <laughs> that we could get. Um, so... You will, we're hopeful that you will allow us to move forward with that because um, it would be very helpful for the fire department. Thank yeah. you. Can I ask real quick? Do you, do you mean that um, you're going to take the money out of the 25 grand out of the reserve and then put it back later? We can put it back later. Okay. If you're happy to do that, we could appropriate it from. Yeah, however, I just wasn't, yeah. that was in, in, the, in the jumble there. I wasn't Yes, I wasn't we sure. certainly can yeah. do that. Um, we could always make a transfer at town meeting from free cash. Yeah. That had yeah, been my yeah, original yeah. plan was to use free cash to fund it. Yeah. By town meeting, we'll have a lot better idea of whether or not we even need to use the finance committee reserve. Right, last year was much harder um, to reconcile. Lynn was a saint due to COVID. <laughs> but um, this year should be simpler because we're using different funding. We don't have the CARES Act funding anymore. And we'll know by May uh, what Snow and Ice looks like. So we should know whether or not we would need to replenish okay. it anyway. Okay, so, so. Let, let's just, thank you very much. Let's just take a step back and let's, concentrate on the senior center first okay so does anybody have any questions about the senior center over escalations 
um, and the proposal by the town manager to um, how to fund those overages. I guess I just have one question. Um, if we take this um, 575 from the reserves, are, is there still reserve left? Like what's left in that account after that? There still be point nine million dollars. So okay, so that if we, in the if we run into an issue with like snow removal, mm -hmm. there's still some wiggle room yes. for the rest of the year. Okay, thank you. Yes, and we will we will be able to make that transfer at the end of the year either way from that yeah. deadline item. So we'll be able to replenish it back up to the one point five number. Thank um, you. I have two questions. One is, um, so presumably, if I look at this list of alternatives, al alternative four is remaining. What is alternative four? Or alternate four, I should say. Give me one minute and I can tell you exactly. You asked the only question she wasn't prepared That's for. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Well, you know what it is? I didn't print the 23-page contract. I, like, went and printed only one page. Um, Thank you for that. See, you're welcome. Let's see if I can figure screen. it out. And while you're looking, I'll just note um, for those uh, millions watching at home oh, that we'll make sure to uh, put a copy of this document in the um, yeah. Finance Committee uh, folder so that it, people can take a look at it. Sorry, I'm looking. I may not be able to tell from the contract even. It might be the patio. So the patio was more of a priority. The outdoor patio space was more of a priority. And I believe alternative. So I guess the bottom line is like someone went through and said these alternatives one through five. Yes. These three are more optional. These other two, because also one, I guess, is, is exactly stay, what, sticking. What so did. these two are higher priority. So someone went through and made that yes, calculation. Yes. Okay. And then we also anticipate that we may be able to actually take the price down further by doing exactly what you're talking about, by value engineering the things that we've already agreed to in the project. Um, but what we did was we went through the alternates and we figured out exactly what were the priorities for our new director and what were not. Um, the patio was a rep priority, especially with COVID, okay. we wanted to have that outdoor space. Yeah. Um, but the polls just were not. Okay, so. okay. And then um, my second question is, um, you went through the, about the 600,000 kind of quickly and I didn't fully get that. What, what is that again? Oh, sure. So what happened was we, um, we have a debt schedule that we follow. Mm -hmm. And every year, pretty much, we have a little bit of debt that falls off, basically debt that we've paid off, right? Okay. And it's debt that was in the levy, which means we've raised it. It's not a debt exclusion. It's not an override. It's debt that we have just built into our budget, a payment. So we had a debt that was falling off that was a payment of $600,000. And what we, we discussed was, you know, we've got the $600,000 in capacity, and it would be really simple to kind of gobble it up and hire people or put it towards something else, but we wanted to hold it because we knew we were going to have more debt coming on soon. So we saved it in this year's budget, and it has no purpose. It's literally just a $600,000 placeholder in this year's budget. To pay off some debt? but To pay off nothing. It really was just to hold to make sure we still had that capacity next year. Because next year we knew that Facilities Match Plan 2 was starting. And once you take the capacity away, you don't get it back to take new debt. Just to hold against it. It's like, it's if, you yeah, it's like yeah. if, you, if you paid your car payment and now you paid off your car, but you just keep that car payment kind of out of your regular household budget because you know you're going to buy another car and have to make the car payment again at some point. Right? So they. Have so, so it's like, it's like um, interest that you'd be paying on some debt. It's basically it's, savings. It's like an escrow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a saving. Does that make sense, Nancy? Uh, I think so. So it's six hundred thousand of, of of paying off some kind of a debt that doesn't exist. Yes. Okay. It doesn't exist anymore. It just it just fell off. It just fell off. Got paid. I mean, like there's a few things that get borrowed for. It's usually buildings, mm -hmm. but you know they have to go to town meeting. You have to be approved to have you know to carry the debt. And right now it's been very affordable to have that kind of debt because the interest rate is so low. So you know you have a short-term debt so it's at five years or ten years or seven years and then in the seventh year you're like wow look the next year we're not going to have to pay this big lump mm -hmm. every year for this and that was what they anticipated and said yeah but well, let's keep the 600 grand in the budget just because we know we're going to have to put do a debt exclusion again mm -hmm. and we don't want to impact taxpayers like try to keep it as level as we can okay so yep. high finance else, Nancy? No. Okay. Eva or Brianna, any questions, comments? No? Okay. No, I no? know that um, that's a good one to ask you too. I know this is my 
life are really hard right now. So, you get it. So, right. I do have one, one thing Go. to ask. I mean, as with any of these projects that I've seen happen, you know, o over the years, this is, there's nothing extraordinarily new about having something at the end saying, oh, wow, this isn't enough. We need this stuff. So, with that being said, I mean, I know you, you, you don't have a crystal ball, but what do you think about next year? Are we, you think we're going to be sitting here and saying, we didn't pay for, I don't know, telephones and so, good wax for the floor. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm being flipped, but I mean, but still, no, what do you I, think? I know we'll be bringing the generator back. That should be the only thing. So when yeah, I, say, say we'll be bringing the generator back. We'll definitely be bringing the hundred thousand dollar generator back because okay. I, it doesn't make sense to me to have a senior center and not have to have a generator. Right. It's right. just the only way I could make this work. Um, when I do a project, I include everything: furniture, technology all the fixtures, everything I could possibly think of that we're going to need. One of the things that's really great about this project is that we also negotiated in the Amazon development agreement $100,000 for the senior center technology and furniture. So if we have a little issue, we're gonna have that to go to, which is great. We also have not touched the contingency, oh. right? And that was something that I didn't wanna go to for this because honestly, the contingency, we might open the ground up and go, Oh, you know, we don't know, right? So yeah. we want to make sure we keep that contingency, which is usually around 6%. So, you know, that was, I was very cognizant of that when I was trying to figure out how we were going to do this, not touching that, because that would have opened up a much bigger problem for us. Right. We don't want to stop work, you know? So I don't anticipate we'll have anything that we'd have to come back to a town meeting for except that generator. Okay. And it's right here, too, so we already yeah. know it, so that's great. Thank you. And why are you... Why are you suggesting to wait on the generator and not just, we know we're going to need it, why not just ask us to transfer an additional 100K to pay for the generator now? Like, yeah, what's the point I of mean, waiting? I certainly could. <laughs> um, I had gone into it with this I have $600,000 kind of framework. Right. Um, you know, the reserve account for me is really for, like, emergencies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Lynn and I talk about this a lot. It's when, like, if somebody retired that we had no idea was going to retire and they have to be paid out some time or um, like something we really didn't know was going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and so we hate to, especially this early in the year, start picking at it because we just don't know. And the last thing I want to have to do is raise snow and ice on the recap for next year. And we wouldn't want to use, like, we can't use, like, free cash or something because that has to be voted at a town meeting. This is, really, we can only get the reserve account because yeah. we can vote on that. Yeah. And I think also, correct me if I'm wrong, they're holding the price of the generator, right? They are holding so it. So it's not right. like okay. it's going to yeah. increase right. or anything. Okay. Yeah, that was, I asked them right. to hold okay. it. They did. Yeah. So it gives you another year to figure out where do we find this money. Right. Maybe, right. You know, maybe something else Maybe we will. can use a contingency, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Or maybe, well, snow. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, is everybody good on that part of the? Yeah. Okay. Of course, you can ask as many as you want. There's no limits. So this is a temporary from the finance reserve to to and to and then there'll be a fund transfer at town meeting to really take it from the six hundred thousand. At the end of the year, what we basically can do under the municipal modernization act is move money around with your permission. So we'll come back to you and ask permission to give money back to you, <laughs> basically. Okay. But we'll be able to transfer it back from that debt line. Okay, but that has to be at the end of the year, so you can't just take it from there now? Nope, we have to do it at the end of the year. The because Municipal Modernization Act only allows you to do it during the last 30 days? Okay. No, 15. 15 days, so. I see. So you'll see us then. Yeah. Okay. I have a question kind of related to that. Yeah, absolutely. No, I actually, Nancy used all the new people yeah. questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Um, how frequently are we being asked to tap into the reserve bucket? Uh, Historically speaking, I know it's only been around for two Rarely. Years, but I've never asked before. Yeah, I don't, no. I don't know of any. Yeah. Okay. And it's, it, is, it is brand new. I mean, well, this yeah. money is, this was a fund that has been around for a long time. Right. But it, th what Ms. Rodriguez did is put it out into the open. Yeah. So we're actually having these open discussions about this rather than having it, you know, moving some line items around more behind the scenes and not like anything nefarious was going on but it just was in a different place and it was just structured differently this okay. is this is new because it is she's got to come before us and have this discussion about why she's moving and when and it makes it all public i mean everything that we say is out there and can be seen it's recorded it's in the minutes and all that and that's the, that's the big difference and no we haven't tapped into it because it's really has, we've hadn't had it long enough 
So. Regina, do you have a? No, I was. You good? Yep. Okay. See, I told you, talky, talky, talky. So let's talk about the $25,000 for the pickup truck yeah. now. Does anybody have any questions on that? No? Okay, so then um, I would uh, ask for folks, uh, we're going to need a motion. Uh, I don't know if we want to combine the motions or take them individually. Uh, I would... Uh, I think my preference would be to take them individually. Um, let's do that. So if someone could offer a motion as it relates or, or not um, <laughs> to, the, um, to the request of the town manager as it relates to the senior center um, overages or escalations. How, how would you like this worded? Yeah, so I would say a motion to transfer $575,782.48 from the Finance Committee Reserved Account to the Facilities Master Plan 1. I don't think you transfer it out of the office. Where do you want it? That's a good question. All right. I'm glad you asked. I, I was going to if you didn't. Okay. So the Facilities Capital Outlay Account. Okay. That makes perfect sense. Then we're going to have to tackle Steve Foster and make sure he knows it's for us. <laughs> That's on you, yeah. Melissa. <laughs> so the motion to transfer $575,782.48 from the Finance Committee Reserve Account to the Facilities Capital Account. So moved. No, you got to say it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. She, yep. Or is that nope. Okay. Can, can we put with the intent that the money be replaced by the debt exclusion account? Or yeah, absolutely. You can. Uh, I don't see why we can't. I, I I might make it a little bit more broad than that, not as specific, right? Mm -hmm. Just to give Lynn and Melissa a little bit more latitude. I'll be back to transfer it. Yeah, yeah I mean I, we've got it on record now. I can't so. use it. Else, so. <laughs> Chris, if you could actually say it, I would appreciate. it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I don't think I actually could. I have to say it. Go ahead. All right. I move that we transfer $575,782.48 from the Finance Committee Reserve Account to the Facilities Capital okay. Account. All right. Great. I'll second. Second by, by Jen. Thank you very much. All those in favor, vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that passes. If we could have a motion on the second request from the town manager, which is the $25,000 for the fire truck pickup, I would appreciate that. That one, that one should go to the fire department vehicle line. Vehicle line, okay. I move that we transfer $25,000 from the finance committee reserve account to the fire department vehicle line. Vehicle Ve line item. You got it. So thank you, Regina. Um, do we have a second? I'll second. Chris has seconded that. And um, all of those in favor, vote aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. We have uh, officially transferred those monies uh, or given permission to transfer those monies over. I'll officially transfer. Yes, Lynn will take care of the officially doing it part. Uh, we have now allowed it. Okay, great. Thank you. So now the second, uh, the other two issues, um, uh, Madam Town Manager, that you were going to discuss was an update on the Stevens Estate and the Facility Master Plan 2, and I would defer to you in which order you take them. Sure. So um, I'm not sure. I, I know I came before you um, before town meeting last year, and we talked a little bit about what was in the contract for the Stevens Estate. Yeah. Um, Friday, we commenced that contract with both Fireside Catering and Mass Audubon. So they both kicked off on Friday. We actually got an email on Monday asking how they pay the rent. It was very <laughs> exciting. Me and Lynn were like, woo! Um, so, but basically what's happening is that the town is going to continue to maintain the ownership, the care, the custody of the buildings and the grounds. We have a 10-year contract with two additional five-year terms. Um, the management fee annually is $150,000 a year and it will increase by 2% on the anniversary, which is the October 15th, and they're paying that in monthly installments. This year's a little bit different, so if you remember in the contract, we had taken some deposits in for events that they're now running. There actually was an event on Friday night and Saturday night, so we basically were like, here you go, here's the keys. <laughs> um, and they ran events that night. It was amazing. Um, so they, that amount will be kind of taken out. We're going to be transferring that from 
the Stevens estate over to the revolving account. So that will populate the revolving account um, and they'll pay a little bit less this year since we've already collected money they would have gotten. Um, there's also a, a revenue fee. So anything that they collect um, over $750,000 a year, the town will get 8% of. So that includes any fees with using the building, the building, food and alcohol sales, room rentals, use of building fees, et cetera. Um, and that's paid annually. Um, and we will be doing, they'll be giving us an accounting. We'll be auditing that accounting in order to make certain that they're paying us what they should be paying us. Um, the town will continue to be a lot, responsible for our utilities up to $20,000. We actually never paid water, so they're taking on the water bill. So we actually just did a reading and they'll be paying water and sewer um, to the town. The town is still responsible for large capital items and they'll be paid for by the revolving account. So what will happen is all the money that we get from the Stevens estate, everything that Fireside pays us, will go into that revolving account. And the revolving account is authorized by a town meeting. And that revolving account can only be used for Stevens estate related items. So this week, we actually have a architect coming to work with us and Fireside on a five-year plan. So they'll be looking at the building, helping us make determinations on what projects we want to take on first, um, not just in the actual Stevens Estate, but also in the carriage house and in the gatehouse, uh, although those will probably be more at the, the end of the term. Um, so, so that's exciting. They're responsible for paying us any hotel or meals tax they decide to start having people stay over, but that's not in the current plan. Um, they have to do 12 events a year for the town, um, which is exciting. All the schools on the senior center of the library. Um, they're actually hosted the library, or they're hosting the libraries. Is it this weekend or last weekend? Friends of the library book sale for us. So it must have been next weekend. That, yeah. um, it's one of their first events that they're having for really? the town. Yep. So that will be their two days, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Um, they're responsible for all of the management, maintenance, oversight, so the structures, the janitorial, trash collection, landscaping, lawn maintenance, all of that stuff they're now responsible for. Um, we have contracted with Mass Audubon to help us manage those trails. And additionally, Mass Audubon will hold, eventually hold the conservation restriction that we approved at the last town meeting. They, Mass Audubon has asked to do a survey after the leaves fall before they, we take on that conservation restriction. Um, I guess that's standard for that type of property. So we'll be doing that survey and then moving forward with that. Um, residents still have access to all of the trails. Um, dogs that are leashed are still allowed. There's designated parking spots for residents only in front of the carriage house. Um, and I think that that's most of it. You know, it, the most exciting part of this for me um, is that all of that revenue that we receive is going to go back into it, which I think is a, is a really big deal. Um, and so we're pretty excited. There was a lot of excitement on Friday um, when it actually happened and we changed the locks and we gave them new keys. Um, they actually hired all of our part-time staff um, and kept them all the bartenders on. Um, we have one full-time employee there who they will be keeping for at least a six-month period um, for a transition. So um, it was a little bit weird because we basically had to lay off the whole staff there, but we knew they'd already been picked up over. So we went through that last week too. Um, and Lynn and I were talking earlier about how, you know, even though this was an enterprise fund, all of the indirect costs were in the budget. So there'll be $80,000 freed up this year when we go to, to do next year's budget because we have the health insurance, et cetera. So even the insurances will now be paid for through, through the revolving account. So great. Thank you. Yeah. Any really questions? Related. Of course, of course. Um, the, how do you differentiate between something that's standard maintenance and a large cap expense? I mean, I know there are obvious things, but are there any nuanced issues? I mean, is, did that come up of like? Yeah, the contract gets into it pretty um, well. So we basically have a threshold. Yeah, so that's the, the attorney general, the inspector general, and the attorney general are really clear that you can't combine construction contracts with leases or management contracts. So we were really careful not to do that. Okay. So basically we said that anything over $10,000 would be ours, right? That would be a capital expense. That's how we would quantify it. I anything see. that would maybe depreciate or appreciate in time, right? Fixtures, that kind of thing. Those were we were going to take on and use our volume account. Okay. That day to day, if they're changing out light bulbs, painting walls, okay. that's on them. How about like snow removal? They're doing snow removal. All they're the doing groundskeeping. We're doing the road up 
because we want residents to be able to use the trails in the winter if right. people snowshoe there. We're doing the road up, they're doing the rest of it. Okay. Um, they're doing like the you know, snow removal from their lawns and sidewalks. They're yep. putting a new tent up, they'll take over all the tent payment. Yep. Right now we have a handicap ramp that we're renting. They are renting the handicap ramp I see. Um, for, for us now. Um, but for instance, last week, the dishwasher broke. <laughs> like right as they were about to take it over. And that was $30,000, so that was on us. Um, See. So, you know, we we're very cognizant of how we kind of needed to balance that, um, which is great. I think one of the things that's nice is having someone just there all the time. If they have a maintenance man who oversees two of their, their properties, um, you know, Fireside Catering is also at the Crane Estate and several other locations. And so, you know, there's somebody who's, Steve Foster, the saint, has, you know, 12 buildings, right? And this guy's yeah. just kind of focused on, on this. So. We're pretty excited about that. And he's under, he's, it's, he's paid by them, paid obviously, by them. and he's doing all this maintenance. And yeah, I yeah. see that, that is. It's kind huge. Of, yes, it is. They're yes. also planning to donate um, the improvements that they want to make to the ballroom. Um, so they're in the middle of, of designing and bidding those out. Um, but they're planning on doing a donation. They want to do some improvements there right away. Yeah. Um, and they're planning on doing quite a few landscaping improvements that they would be donating back to the town as well. Are they under any restrictions through the historical commission? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, um, they understand their, their qualifications. They run Groton um, Giblet Farm in Groton Hill. Mm -hmm. So they um, are used to working with historical properties. The historical preservation was um, attached to the um, agreement. They had a sign that they understood what the restrictions were, um, and they've actually already met with um, Kathy up there. So um, that's been good. And we actually we inventoried as part of what we were doing. We inventoried the entire building uh, with the historical commission uh, because we wanted to make sure that one we knew there was a lot of stuff that needed to be thrown away. There was stuff that was there from when we took the building from BU. Honestly, um, you know, I found we found personnel files that were BU's personnel <laughs> files. I mean, it was unbelievable. But additionally, there were things that were historical, and I didn't want them to get lost. Yeah. So um, the chair of the historical commission went through the whole building with us, inventoried the entire building before we threw anything out, and actually the friends of the library inventoried every single book. Wow. Yeah. We just didn't want, I, the last thing I wanted was anything wow. of, of significance to go missing or get yeah. lost. So That's an impressive overhaul. Yeah. That is, that's amazing. really, so. that's really cool. We were actually able to donate some stuff to Lazarus House because they didn't need the dishes or the linens anymore. So oh, wow. it actually was a really a great, ended up being a great great. So, so Melissa, can I ask, um, with the changes that they're going to be doing to the property, is there something in the contract that requires town approval for that? Because yes. I know there was, just from sitting on that Stevens Estate long-term advisory, that would be important. Yeah, we actually will have to do all the work. Um, so. It will have to be bid and we'll have to manage it. So yes, we'll have to be involved in all of it. Uh, the plan is that we'll meet annually to create a, the five-year capital plan, kind of in the same timeline as we're creating our five-year capital plan mm -hmm. right now so that we're working together on it. Um, and the architect that's doing the work is actually doing the work for us. Um, so it, it will Excellent. work out nicely. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. So is it the same enterprise fund that will be used where we're collecting the money or the enterprise fund goes away? The enterprise fund will go away. So we will, at the next town meeting, um, ask to rescind the enterprise fund. We created a revolving account at the last town meeting, and we'll be using that. Okay. And the money from the enterprise fund, whatever is there, will go into... Right. So the only the money that's going to be left in the enterprise fund... So this is my next question. There, yeah. That's so it's just going to be... There. <laughs> there's no money left in the retained earnings, unfortunately. Um, the retained earnings were a negative 6,000-ish. And, but we're, there is still capital accounts that are existing, right? So some of those we're actually planning on using. Like we wanted to try to get the gas done. It, but if we're paying the utilities, it makes perfect sense for us to get rid of the oil and go to the gas, right? So some of them we're gonna use, some of them we're gonna flip back and they'll go into the revolving account. Um, but there is no money left in the enterprise. So what happens if we have not a lot of money yet in this revolving fund and now the dishwasher broke, yeah. but now something else breaks and something yeah. else breaks, and now we have and a bunch of stuff. Yeah. We have five things that are over ten thousand dollars that we have to we're so we obligated ha yeah. to fix. So we have the deposits. So that's going to be kind of our cushion right now, and then they immediately start paying rent. So the money will start. You know, one of the big things that that we had talked about was what if what if we just did an annual payment? And I was like, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> we, we need to get monthly income in, right? So they'll start making those monthly payments on the fifteen thousand that we'll be able to start saving up. I'm sorry. So, what? So what are the, mon what are the monthly? So it's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. And what are the fees, the deposits that we have? So we have, and I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but we but have booking fees directionally that we have taken in over um, 
for events that will be run from now until the end of this fiscal year. And then again, in the next fiscal year too, because people were rebooking during COVID and booking kind of far out. Right. Um, so those fees that we've already taken in, we're holding. And so we'll, we right. have a nice cushion. To but start deducting with. that from their rent. We're deducting that from okay. their rent. So, yep. but 150K per month, okay. Yeah, so it's, we have a good cushion to start with, which okay. is good. That's and honestly, they've been amazing. Like when I called them about the um, dishwasher, they were like, if you're in a tough spot, we can get the dishwasher. Like they've really been um, so, good to work with, it, it's been really refreshing. And sorry, this so this rolling fund is gonna be for all, is there gonna be a separate capital fund? One account. Or just one account. The rent's gonna go in and we're gonna annually set a capital plan for mm -hmm. what we're gonna plan on spending yep. that with assumedly some reserve for things you, that break and right. whatever. And the utilities, but, yep. Yeah. And you, okay. And the utilities are capped at $20,000 a year with a 2% escalator just like the contract. Okay. And, and you said we have an architect already who we've mm -hmm. hired to... Yes. Yep. Who's working with us on... So they're right now they're doing an assessment of the building and the needs. We did an assessment of the building, but it's pretty old now. Yeah. Yeah, um, there's additional water damage that's occurred since then um, that's fairly significant in a few of the different areas. Mm -hmm. So, and honestly, their priorities maybe have been different from what our priorities would have been. So we need to figure out, you know, that's something we'll be doing together to figure out what the new priorities are for, mm -hmm. for the groups. Um, so it, it will be interesting to see how that, that works, but we'll be creating an annual five-year plan. So Melissa, um, my recollection is that that old assessment, it, it was, it's pretty old, but yeah. it was still pretty high up there. Yes. It was over, uh, well over a million dollars, mm -hmm. I think. And I think the Stevens Estate Long-Term Advisory Plan, based on some of the estimates, and they weren't like formal estimates, but just based on talking to people, suggested that the long-term maintenance and, and rehabilitation of the building could be over $10 million plus. I mean, and I think that might be more yeah. over-encompassing than whatever the short-term plan is, but $150,000 a year doesn't quite stretch even as far as the old estimate. So what what's a long-term plan about financing the, the maintenance and upkeep that the building needs? Right, so they definitely think that they're going to be above that $700,000 threshold based on other properties that they run. I, I would agree with that based on looking through their, their um, finances before we approve the contract. So that's one. Two, the other thing that we're going to have that we didn't have before is that we have the ability to bond projects now because we'd have that money in the revolving account, right? So we finally would have some income coming in that's guaranteed income that we didn't have before. So we'll be able to take on bigger projects. Like if you think of $100,000, just think of $100,000, that's a million dollar project. When you look at the bond, you know, so we it actually is opening up some capacity for us to take on that bigger project. When we first toured it Mass, with Mass Audubon, one of the things that that they were really interested in was the, was the gatehouse, and they're like, we would love to run a nature preschool here, mm -hmm. you know, and it, that's something that we would want to invest in too. So there, these new partnerships are kind of bringing in some new opportunity as well. That's great. It is good. And do you question, still just sorry? Go ahead, Chris. No, no, I just think it's a good question. Yeah. Uh, do you still anticipate working with? Uh, you know, the CPA fund, CP, the CPC, and working on projects through them as well, I would assume. We do. We agree that we would um, explore that every year. Um, one of the first ones I think you'll see come forward is the painting. So we got, um, <laughs> yeah. we had a, a art preservationist from the Isabella Gardner Museum who actually had worked with that artist before come out and meet us on site. Um, and so the painting, interestingly, it can't leave. Uh, it's just, it's too big to leave. Um, and they're not really even sure how the um, frame is sitting there. It's like <laughs> crazy. So they'd have to work on it there. Um, but they cleaned a small portion of it while we were sitting, like talking to them, and it was unbelievable. Really? Like the amount of damage and soot, you know, on it. Mm -hmm. So they explained their process and how they, what they would do, and they're working on getting us a quote for that. Great. So things like that, I think we would, we would still, still employ, bring forward. Because yeah, it's still our, we still own it. It's still our value that we're building at the end of the day in 20 years or 10 years, however long it ends up being. It's, it's our asset. I, I agree. I'm happy yeah. to hear you say that. Anybody else have any questions? Um, I have one question. Can you, can you start to refresh my memory on the history of this? Because I recall at town meeting, I don't know, maybe two, three years ago, there was a big vote about Stevens Estate. And I think that at that time it was, to, to, there was a vote on was it selling it or, or someone else managing it and yep, I thought so that was voted no so what, I, I guess um, just in case townspeople I mean the townspeople are aware of this like what was the history of how we got to this point if, sure. it's, br if it's brief so it's, it's was before me but um, since 1994 uh, the town's been working on trying to kind of figure out what the plan was yeah, um, you know yeah. and you read back in the in the minutes I'm like oh my god in 94 they were having the same <laughs> conversation it's amazing right. um, but 
a few years ago, the town brought forward a plan to sell the property. Okay, that was the one um, that And that down. failed. And, and, you know, the resounding kind of thing that we heard, I think, you know, and I wasn't there, I just watched it, was that people really wanted to keep it, right? They wanted to have it continue to be a town asset, um, but they understood that we really, we're good at a lot of things. We're not that good at weddings. Like, we do our best, <laughs> but, it, you know, that's outside of my, um, my wavelength here. So, um, a management contract actually doesn't need to go before a town meeting. Okay. Um, and so that was the way that we, we went about it okay. after a lot of public process. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, great. there was yeah. a, quite a bit of public. A lot of public uh, process. Yeah. Yeah. This which was good. together a long-term um, Stevens, mm -hmm. uh, Stevens Estate long-term planning. Com mm -hmm. I, I was on it. The <laughs> finance committee, I, I can't remember the name of it, but the finance committee had a representative on it. Um, I think CPC had a representative. Like, and so yeah. there were... There was a lot of process that happened, and then a recommendation was made mm -hmm. to the select board. We did surveys. Yeah. A lot. It was about 18 the months. The select board did a lot yeah. of public here meetings yeah. on it. And this is where we ended up, which was, you know, in the end, I think, going to be really end up being very beneficial. I so agree. We're excited. Great. Okay, how about uh, facilities master plan, too? So I feel like this may end up leaving you with more questions than answers, but I'm going <laughs> to... The last two nights, Stan and I have been <laughs> together at the facilities master plan meetings that the schools are doing to talk about their recommendation. And so um, I'm pulling up their, their slides that they ran through tonight. So as you know, um, God, about 18 months ago, we bid out facilities master plan two. Um, and facilities master plan two is going to be including the Atkinson School, the Franklin School, the Kittredge School, the North Andover Middle School, the ABECC, Fire Station 2 in the Youth Center. And for the last 18 months, um, you know, the Fire Station and the Youth Center were kind of easy, right? Because, you know, those are, are pretty limited in scope. Um, the Youth Center is, getting, is asking for an addition that would really just add some flex space. Um, one thing that we realized during the pandemic is that the Youth Center is very well utilized and very small. Um, <laughs> the, the Fire Station, it would introduce a new bay where we would be able to have storage and also park an ambulance. It, but it would also accommodate female firefighters. So we have several female firefighters now. Um, and unfortunately do not have accommodations for them that are suitable at um, Fire Station 2. So those were kind of easy projects. Um, the school projects were much more involved. So they created a school capacity committee, which Stan served on, and they had many, many, many meetings and a lot of surveys as well. And they brought a recommendation forward to the school committee, and the school committee in September brought that recommendation forward to me. So basically what it does is it is a renovation in addition at Atkinson. And you're in no particular order. A renovation in addition at Franklin. A new Kittredge Elementary School, so a total reconstruction. A North, a North London Middle School addition. And an addition of a gym to the ABECC because that's been undersized since opening. Um, and so since then, they, they brought that to me on September 23rd. About three days later, we got a call from the MSBA that we had applied to them as the Mass School Building Commission. We had applied to them um, and had asked for their assistance in funding our projects. Um, yesterday, we had our first meeting with them for site eligibility, and Thursday, we actually have a tour of the Kittredge School. So while we were well in the throes of trying to do the fiscal analysis and figure out how we were gonna bring these projects forward and what we were going to do, suddenly there's kind of a wrench in it, in a beautiful, wonderful wrench right. that would give the taxpayers really a break. Um, they have indicated to us that we would hear whether or not we were invited to be a part of the process by either December or March. I had indicated to them that December would be so much better <laughs> um, because that's when our warrant is available and we'd have to call a special town meeting if they ended up going to March because you have to appropriate, if you're invited to be a part of their process, you have to appropriate the design funds for that school within 270 days. So if they told us in March, it's way before the next Maytown meeting. So that would be difficult for us unless we call the special within the annual, but it feels like very short notice to do that. So we had really stressed um, the importance of that. I will say I've been through a lot of these processes with the Mass School Building Commission. I never felt more optimistic than when I left that meeting. Um, the superintendent, assistant superintendent did a great job. We were able to really talk a lot about the new um, development that we have coming on and why this is impactful. Um, we were able to talk about what we have planned. So if you look at the next 15 years of our debt, we actually have $73 million in capacity open up 
It's amazing, right? So, you know, what we've been doing, and I've been driving Lynn and, and Laurie crazy, is I've been building out all these different scenarios where I'll be like, what do you think of this one? How about this one? And so we're working that process through. So we're hoping that in December, we know, and then we can kind of just kick off one of those scenarios and start that public process, talking to everybody about this is what it costs, this is how many years it's going to take, this is how we plan to do it. Um, you know, we've even been running it to the point of how much it will cost each taxpayer and the average household per year, what the total cost of all of the bonds are for all of the projects, because that's what I'd want so, to know. Sorry to interrupt you, but the yeah. MSBCA, whatever. The Mass that, School Building Commission? For all the schools, not that just, just for the new. Kittredge. Just the Kittredge? Just Kittredge, that's, yeah. the one they're, they're, that's the one they're looking at. But so. that's okay, because the, to be, the Kittredge one, because it's a full construction, mm -hmm. is by far the most expensive. Well, yeah, so for them but. to fund that, right, would be so beneficial to the town. For them to fund one of the smaller projects, we wouldn't get as much reimbursement. Right, but they wouldn't consider like an overall no. application for all the schools well, we in the district. For all four. We apply for all four. Um, and only kids are just move forward. And, and um, we've applied for the middle school in the past. Three, three or four. Well, right, three or four, but I right? guess I've, I've, yeah. I've read different analyses of people who thought that be, we were too uh, limited in scope and that's why we were never getting approved. And if we did a bigger scoped application. We applied for everything. Okay. And they picked Kittredge, which is great. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. based on the way that we've been scoping it out, Jim has said this is the last two meetings, so it's no secret. You know, I, I, I anticipate we still would take the middle school first. Um, and then, Sorry, say that again. It's hard with the math. Okay, based on the way that we are scoping everything out. Yeah. I anticipate we actually would take the middle school first. Okay. Even if we get the MSPA funding. Okay. It just would line up well because of the six hundred thousand dollars that we've saved in the budget for the last two years. Right. Right. So, um, you know, there's still hope mm. for the other schools. It's not like you know we are going to do Kittredge and nothing else is going to happen. That's not the plan at all. We're planning the funding for all of them. We're planning how. Right. Big, I think the thing that we're going to have to kind of get away from is that facilities master plan one was much more limited in scope much cheaper right we we're talking about we did town buildings we did we didn't have the same accessibility issues we didn't have the same age issues that total project was forty thousand dollars for all the buildings i believe Thirty. yeah yep. 40 million thank you dollars for all of the building which was forty thousand dollars forty million dollars for all those buildings right this will be yeah. three or four times that, right. right? So, you know, we won't be able to do it in that same design, build, design, build, design, build, right? We're gonna have to build time for people to kind of recuperate a little bit, right? Um, and also just try to balance the least impact to the taxpayer, and that's kind of what we're, that's how we're trying to address it. So, you know, I, I, have a, I had a lot of hope when I left that meeting the other day. Um, you know, if you can get to one of the forums that the school is running, it's really just about, their projects that they're bringing forward, why the needs are and what they're recommending. Um, but it's really interesting. They have lots of pictures of the facilities that you can see. Um, they're holding one in each of the facilities so that you kind of can get an idea of, oh, I can see why this is needed. Um, and they have a really great comparison of, you know, this is what the MSBA says we need for space. This is what we actually have. This is why we're doing that. So, you know, I think it goes a long way. We are building out right now, and I think it'll actually be live probably the end of this week, a facilities master plan to website for the entire process. Currently, the schools have a facilities master plan to school capacity site on their website that you can go to right on their homepage, but we'll have everything in one place to make it easier for people. Melissa, can you talk a little bit about, we have some new committee members, a little bit about how the facilities master plan interacts with the capital improvement plan? So the facility master plan um, is really what we, do. it's a study of our buildings, right? We're looking at, and it's not all of our buildings. We kind of pick the ones that we're most interested in and we um, address those needs. All it's really doing is, is feasibility and conceptual design, right? We're not getting real cost estimates. We're, we're getting cost estimates, but we're not getting like actual construction documents, right? We're just getting kind of high level, this is what we see as needs, this is what the conditions are, this is the space we have, and this is what we recommend. And then what we do is we take those estimates and we build them into our capital plan. So every year the town meets, we do a five-year capital plan. Once we have good estimates on these, we'll build them out. One thing we're doing a little bit differently with facilities master plan two than we didn't really do a facilities master plan one is we're actually accounting for inflation. So uh, we're applying a 5% inflation factor for each year to the projects, um, which is why the numbers start to get a little bit scary. 
Um, we're also accounting for all of the operating costs that go along with the buildings, and we're bringing those forward too. That's great. So it, it's really important. Yeah. Right? And it's not just people, right? A lot of people will say, well, if we have five more classrooms, we need five more teachers. You're right, we do, right? I, I agree, we need five more teachers, but we also need their benefits. Right. We also need their Medicare costs. We also have to know what their unemployment would be. Like, so we have to build all that in. But also, we're adding 14,000 square feet, and 14,000 square feet has to be heated. heated. It needs right. lights. Please. It's going to need additional janitorial. So we're bringing all of that forward in one That's package. That's terrific. It, it's, it's great in so many ways because like we talked before with the senior center, right? And you don't know what the total cost is going to be. We'll know, this is what it's gonna cost. And we're applying a 3% factor to all of those needs. So all of that is being for accounted for when we're forming these scenarios out. So, and, and this is just something I've heard around. It, the last capital improvement plan included some placeholders for facility master plan too because it, it hadn't been bid out mm -hmm. yet. Is that correct? This, so, we used to have a lot of placeholders, probably around like the 2018, 2019 um, timeframe where we had placeholders. Um, you know, I, looking back at those numbers is almost, I don't wanna say funny, but for instance, we may have held $500,000 and now the estimate for the design is 2.5 million, right? right. I mean, it's, it, it's way off, but it was just put there so that people would remember the project was coming, yep. right? We had kind of pulled those out when we started doing facilities master plan too, because we, in my experience, if you say something is going to cost $5, and 10 years later, you say it's gonna be $7, everyone's like, you said $5, <laughs> and you're like, okay, you're right, I did. So what I did in the more recent capital improvement plans is I just wrote in my letter that yep. these were in flux, and they always are, right? Needs change. Today I had the fire chief in my office, the new fire chief. Chief McCarthy next year had a carport on, the, on his five-year capital plan. Chief Wee is like, I don't want a carport. You know, like these things change, yep. it's what happens, needs change and our financing changes. So I had put a note in there just basically saying that we're working our facilities master plan too. All of these projects are gonna be coming on in the next five years and so this is really a year in flux. Right. Um, f next year, fiscal year 23, you'll see these um, built in. Now it will be interesting because we usually do a five year plan. We'll probably have a supplement this year that will include the funding schedule further out for all of these projects because I don't anticipate we would even have, even if we had the financial capacity to do it in five years, yeah. we wouldn't have the physical capacity. Right. So. Okay. Well, I was just gonna ask that. What is the timing of this plan? Like, what are you anticipating? Because I think it was facilities master plan one, it was pretty much an annual, we're gonna fund the design and, and for yeah. a project two years down the road and fund the construction for the right. project in the next year. So you were sort of staggering it so that there was something every year that you were designing and something you were building. Are we, with the expected significant costs for these, which are much bigger than facilities master plan one, is the idea that we're gonna finance it for like staggered year to year for the next few years, or is this gonna spread out over a longer horizon? It will spread out. I mean, if you think about facilities master plan one, you are 100% right that we had a five year plan, but we formed that, we created that plan in 2012, it is 2021 and I just asked you for funding for the senior center, right? So while we may have done design, build, design, build, design, build, it didn't always kind of actually work, work out, out that, that way, way because yeah. these things take time, right? Um, these projects are even more complicated, right? So if you think about the Kittredge school, they're going to have to, and the Kittredge is probably the easiest one, they're gonna build a school, right? Move the kids into the next school and then demolish the school. They'll be doing an addition on Atkinson and Franklin while school's going on. Right, and so that that requires a lot of additional free phasing in order to make sure the students are safe, the faculty safe, and that they're able to to continue educating. Right, and so these projects will take a little bit longer, mm -hmm. even if we did want to do it that way. You know, when I'm done with my scenarios, I'll bring you one that shows basically us doing it that old way and what the impact on the taxpayer would be. I mean, it's two to three times what it would be if we spread it out. Yeah. So that's a value proposition, right? Do we want to spend that, are we, are we willing to have taxes increase that much? Right. To me, it makes more sense to be deliberate, slow, sustain it, and actually get it all done without having to be burdensome. Yeah, that makes sense. Good. Anybody else? Um, I just have a quick question. So um, first of all, I think it's great that you're, you know, it sounds like you're constantly upgrading your planning. So now you're including contingencies and, and you're including inflation. So that's, that's really great to hear. And then the operating cost part that you mentioned, so when you have the facility master plan, and there's capital cost and then there's additional operating costs, the capital part would be, would go forward as part of the capital plan that the town votes on. 
right? And then the operating cost part would just be built into the annual operating plans going forward. But do people, how do people have, given that you're calculating all those operating costs, how does the town have visibility to that? Like when they're voting on a capital item, there's nothing that says, oh, this capital item is a million dollars and an additional 100,000 per year in operating cost. So how, is that right? Like how, how so would the- I built three, way, three sheets. One sheet is just like numbers. It just has numbers. The other sheet, actually, it's like a um, design, build, operating worksheet, and mm -hmm. it links all of the projects. Um, and it accounts for that inflation, but it, it links the projects operating with the capital. And what I anticipate is that when we have the final project, um, like usually we put forward a report, it will include what those operating costs are, so it's, it's the most transparent it possibly can be. Um, you know, I'm hopeful that we're going to be able to do a lot of the operating costs just within within our regular increases. Mm -hmm. um, there there could be the need for an override um, in the future. I'm hoping that that's not going to be the case, um, but we're still kind of building that out. Um, but my plan is to, when we introduce this, when we present it, to present it all together. Because when you're voting for the capital, mm -hmm. in essence, you're also voting to make these right. operational increases. Whether you may are voting or not, we're committing to something, right? We're not going to build a new school, put 12 classrooms in, and then not bring 12 mm -hmm. teachers on. It doesn't make sense. Right, so we need to look at it holistically, or and I not think need it. yes. And so when I'm doing the cost of what that debt would cost the average taxpayer, we're also looking at what that operational would cost. I think that's good. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay. All right, Madam Town Manager, meeting. that's it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Give Appreciate it. Meeting. This is going to be my third meeting tonight. This is a well, good week. So thank I you for saving us for last. No, thank you. I have one more now. Okay, thank you, Melissa. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, let's see. The next item on the agenda is... Okay, the, actually, we're going to go a little bit out of order with permission from everybody, if that's okay. I want to save the next one that's on the agenda for after. So at our last meeting, we talked about the Finance Committee Policies Rules of Procedures, which is item uh, seven on our agenda. Uh, and we talked about folks taking a look at it over the last uh, month and seeing if there's any edits, changes, suggestions um, that you had and that we would talk about at this meeting. And if there were, we would uh, do our best to incorporate them. And if not, then we would, um, as per our uh, policies and procedures, uh, vote to accept them uh, for this year. So does any, at this time, I would offer the floor to anybody who has any edits, suggestions, changes, or, or anything to go ahead and let them rip. And there are none. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> okay, then. Sorry, I just had to, had to, I had to make notes before I had to review them. There's, there are a couple of typos in this particular document, like under the, in the preamble, um, and I, I'm hoping that somebody else has read them. I this too. The you, you, okay, <laughs> so um, the Finance Committee, consisting of a diverse group of citizens, may review and aspect of municipal finance. That's the third line in. So... Yeah, that needs to be corrected. Okay. Um, there's no submission in that case to make objective and concise recommendation to the needs on the annual so too, Maybe someone could just read it clerically and correct you, typos. We, do we, we, don't we can absolutely do that. Yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> I mean, anticipate I can, go, no, going through every typo. I, yeah. I was thinking more in terms of... Um, okay, then, then uh, that was the one that I just jumped out at me. And so and this is an actual change that I had discussed, um, I don't know, another year, somewhere, another time, is uh, rules of procedure and voting. It's like on the third page there. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. D is the act of the committee will be known as a majority vote. So we vote by majority. An mm -hmm. act of the committee represents the decision by the entire committee Oh, it says no, no simply, should be simply, not yeah. simply those members voting in support. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we all know that because it's the way we function. And this also allows for a minority report. We've always had the ability to have a minority report. And, and if, if, for those who aren't familiar, I mean, that literally is at town meeting, um, people who disagreed with the majority vote actually putting forward their argument, even though it, it's not what was supported by the right. income. And I think that this is a fairly large group. I 
thought it would be better for it to be three votes than merely two. At this, you can all, all you need is two people for a minority for report. a minority report, and I thought that it should be three. That's was okay. my suggestion. So that's something to think about. Um, it just makes I would like to see a stronger case, mm -hmm. and not just someone who was being contrary and has a friend. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so that rules me out for any minority reports. There I have no go. friends. No friends, no <laughs> friends at all. Um, but I mean, I've seen it, it happen along the way, and it's like, and sometimes you can get, it, it, I mean, like, it depends on the group of people that you have. I mean, it, n minority reports haven't happened in the last couple of years, but uh, historically, I've seen that happen many times. And it, it can be pretty disruptive. And if it's three people, then it has to be a much more salient argument than merely sure. two, as in it's a fairly large committee. Okay. So that's just something to think about. Does anybody have any thoughts on that? Makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. Anybody? Anybody disagree with that? Okay, would anybody like to propose an edit to our policies and procedures on that? Regina, I, you're, are you thinking still? I'm thinking, but no, I agree, because the two people, I guess, can stand up as citizens if they are always. so uh, moved, always can. so no, you critical always, that they must right. say they can stand up as a citizen. Right, you but to be the official minority, minority it just, would it, it, the, so, yeah, What I happens agree. is it's okay. not written into the official yeah, report. Yeah. That's the distinction. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, it just okay. takes okay, a little so bit we'll, of we'll, we'll off of that. How many members are we? Nine. Nine. So that's, you, you know, like past, that math? So it had to like be any math. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm on the finance committee. <laughs> so that would be a third of the committee would have to, you yeah. know, disagree. It just seems to me, it seems more logical to me, but. So yeah. I, I have no issue with that. Um, I'm seeing all, everyone nodding yes. Um, okay. So what, what I would, what I would ask is that. Um, we have to make votes on Jill, Well, yeah, what I, what I think what we'll do is we'll have Jillian um, maybe, go through this and correct the typos. We'll have her edit and denote the, this change. Okay. We'll bring it back next month, vote on it then. Does that seem fair? Yeah, and in the, because in the meantime, I might probably think it harder if there's anything else. So yes, I, it, <laughs> so, well, I mean, thinking this is, I know, thinking hard. It's just that the thing is, it's, it's, a, it, it's a big deal, the policies and procedures. It is, I, I would and, agree. You know, I really highly recommend that you, you all take a real Hard look at well, it. Well, that was the homework assignment last yeah, time. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> okay, um, good. Um, good. Yes, Regina. Yeah, no, I was just going to agree that the policies seem kind of light. I, I apologize. I did not do appropriate okay. homework. But since we have an extra yeah. bit of time, I will think about the policies a little more. The procedures, generally, I'm fine with. Yes. But maybe the policies are. I would encourage you to do that. Are a bit light, so yeah. I'll. I, I would just that. say this. We, tech, I, th I think, according to these, we are supposed to approve them uh, maybe at the first meeting or within the first month or something. So I, I do think, um, you know, we don't want to spend the whole year on this. Oh, no. I right, don't think no. so yeah. either. Agreed. Okay. But there haven't yeah. been any changes. I mean, they're generally. In a very no, time, I, so. which is why I, I wanted to do this. Yeah. So I, I would agree. Okay, good. Okay. Um, of course. The, there's, I noticed that there are several documents that new members are supposed to receive. So, if these documents are all still relevant, how will we receive them? And if they're not relevant, then that could be one of the edits. I would um, agree. So I, they should. You, you should have received them. Um, and I know we received the. Um, there's one. Uh, it's a state document actually. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I think it's this Association of Town Finance Committees That's handbook. Right. I know we received that one from Mark, but. Maybe I don't recall receiving the other ones. Do you remember okay. receiving anything? Yeah, well, let's, yeah. let's, uh, let's we'll go through that and yeah, get them to you. Particularly the town financial policy, it sounds like that would be really helpful. So the town financial policy, I don't think has been approved by the Board of Selectmen yet. Oh, it's not right? a standing document? I think document. that's an annual. Oh, that, I am thinking of that. You're right. I apologize. Never mind. We'll get you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. All right. Um, so we'll we'll move on to so Chris, um, who is a tremendously helpful uh, person, um, brought this next topic uh, to to me, and I, I think it's a great one. So uh, we put it on the agenda, which is item six: discussion of.
topics members would like to uh, touch on with the school administration, and I uh, spoke to Superintendent Gilligan and told him that we were gonna put this on the agenda and that we would likely talk about things we would like to hear from them, and then he was gracious and, and offered to come in um, and, and talk about anything we wanted to. So I thought we could talk about it openly and publicly, get it on a list, get it over to the superintendent. Uh, obviously, you're not limited to whatever list we develop this evening. We can always add to it, but I thought just a starting point um, might be helpful. Um, Chris, I, I know that you felt strongly about this, which, and I think it's a tremendous idea. I don't know if you have any well, ideas to start us off. I mean, I got the reason I, I it's, it's something that I hear about more than anything else. Yep. Um, as far as you know, financial considerations, I hear an awful lot about you know, what's going on with the schools and you know, how are we spending this or you know, did we hire an architect or did we hire a design person and those are sorts of basic questions. And I mean, I know that um, the town manager addressed a lot of those, but I don't have kids in the schools right now. So it's not as personal to me as it is to, I think, a lot of you. And a lot of you might be far, much more close to, to a lot of those issues. So um, I would just assume not start, start off Fair. with that. Um, but I just thought the public, the general public, should we should be doing this kind of a discussion for them because I know it's, it's, it's hot topics right now. I agree. You know, so. Um, I mean, so I'll sit back. If no one else has something, I mean, I'm sure we can dig something up, but we'll see. Well, and again, like I said, we don't, whatever list we come up with tonight or don't come up with tonight, you know, shouldn't limit any interaction we have yeah. or any discussions we have moving forward. Um, people can certainly think about this and come back next meeting uh, and, and offer a suggestion. Uh, like I said, the superintendent, and I know the assistant superintendent will be more than happy to come in when, whenever we ask, um, and, and we can sit them down and walk through anything we need as we've done in the past um, and, and likely you know would do without this discussion so I, at this I guess what I would do is open it up now if anybody has any items that they'd like to add to the list we can do that and if not we can continue to think about it um, and, and that's fine you know it this doesn't have to be a form of you know a formal list it's also an invitation to the public to send us those questions too so that we can answer the things that maybe that they don't feel comfortable uh, in or don't absolutely know, don't agree and was hopeful that, that that would happen yeah yeah hey, I have a, my son is in middle school here and um, he was telling me i think they have one gym that's like not usable and so they're very limited to just one and i just didn't know why it takes so long for something to get done in this town like years and years <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering because um, I only moved like less than three years ago to this town but I have been seeing a lot of people um, complaining about that then exactly that uh, why haven't we hired an architect yet like yeah it's been planned the money is there correct for years and years and it just hasn't like moved so that forward. fitness center or room whatever yeah. it, on it. He said that there was like broken ceilings that like fall down. Yeah, they were doing some floor work. On I, I know there was some floor work. I think that yeah. recently got completed. Right. Yeah. I was curious if it was being used now, but. I, yeah, and it doesn't sound like it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, That's a good I one. I, the other issues that I keep hearing from people as well include what are we doing financially to help support getting class sizes? smaller yep. um, that is a big one that I hear over and over again um, and why do why are we sort of baked into that as a question of you know the town was told years ago when the ABECC was built that there would be additional classrooms fill freed up which would lead to more teachers in the elementary schools yep. which for the most part has not happened um, and so I think that is a question that I hear often is if the elementary class sizes are still big, why do we have these empty classrooms without teachers? So how are we financially moving towards that? I know these are things that we have discussed as a committee with um, mm -hmm. Dr. Gilligan and Dr. Mealy before, but I think those are two really big issues. Um, I think also there's a lot of concern that I've heard from other parents about, especially now with MCAS scores coming out um, and the testing and learning loss around COVID. Mm -hmm. um, what are we doing to support students and do we have the financial resources necessary? And I think from the, that's how I'm hearing it 
input from other parents, but I think that from a finance committee perspective, with the additional COVID funding that we were talking about getting at the end of last year, how much of that actually went to the schools? How was that deployed? How is it working? Are there additional resources? For example, I understand there was a fifth classroom added to one of the grades at the sergeant this year to help try to alleviate some of those issues. But what's, what's the update on all of that I, stuff? I, I was going to say the exact same thing. Like at the time of the budget, we had a lot of discussion and presentation from the schools of these are the things that we anticipate we're going to need the extra money for and we're going to be able to use CARES Act funding so we don't need to use the free cash and all that discussion. It would be great to know. That's what did true. they end up spending it on? Yep. <laughs> and yeah. how much? And yeah. 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 I have a kiddo in kindergarten, um, and I've heard a lot of parents talk about there's a, she's not a special ed teacher, but an assistant that helps kids when they need a little extra assistance with the reading skills, and most kids are needing that this year, just probably due to COVID and everything else. But I only think there's one facility member that coordinates that. Yeah. So it would be interesting to hear. If the school has any plans to add more, because yep. um, it sounds like a lot of kids need that type of support. Yeah. So. Okay. Good. Yeah, I like I like the point about the MCAS results are are back now. Yeah. So, assumedly yeah. we're we're making a lot of assess you know. Yep. Decisions yeah. based on yeah. that yeah. and decisions on you know additional supports and whatnot. Yeah. The funds have really shifted now. I mean, you know, all this COVID money coming in, and it, it, you know. That's changed, obviously. It's shifted, yeah. you know. It's like, right. and, and did you use it or did you not use it? Or, like, right. did you change your mind midstream? What happened? Yeah. Like, what happened yeah. from over the summer? What was the result of, like, what was spent over the over summer? Over the summer, right. yeah. Probably. Yeah, like, yep. you know, how yeah. did that work out? Any, any of those things. It's just, I, I would love to get a, a, yeah. a list of those kinds of questions because I know it's, it's very near and dear. Having yeah. been on the school committee, it's really, really intensely personal. To people, you know, because they're your they're your little ones, and it's it, it's be great to have the discussion, even if it's just a discussion. And yep. it's always always good to have Dr. Gilligan and Dr. Mealy here to. I would um, agree. Out of curiosity, I know the ADECC is a new building. Mm -hmm. Why wasn't there a gym built? I know they call it like the cafetorium or something, mm -hmm. you know, multi-purpose room. But yeah. That could, we can table that, but I, I would love to if anybody has more context around that. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, good. So I have, I have um, started a list here, and I know um, Jillian will pick up any that I didn't when she rewatches this. So okay. um, good. Thank you. I think that was a good discussion. I think the last thing on the agenda is a review of the uh, budget calendar. Uh, I think you all got a copy of that. Um, and it is uh, in your packet. I, I guess if you haven't looked through it, take a quick look through if you have any questions. Um, and this is not solely directed at our new members, but um, if anybody has any questions, um, I think now would be a good time to bring them up. We have our finance director uh, in the room who could address anything that any of us um, as a committee couldn't answer. Uh, and you know what, Lynn, I would invite you up if you want, it, yeah, just if you want to. I was hoping that you all set the finance committee meeting yep. schedule based on the um, budget calendar that was put together. Yeah, if you wanted to suggest any changes. Um, well, there's, there's key dates within your finance committee schedule that look, appear to be not matching with the budget. I think so the, the so first. The first pass we took was on room availability for this room. <laughs> so now that we have the budget calendar, yeah. we, we are more than willing, or I am more than willing to go back and, and figure it out. So okay. any yeah. suggestions you have would be appreciated. Yeah, because I mean, you, for when we forward the, the uh, CIP to the Finance Committee, it's usually the day after the, the Board of Selectmen receive it, which you, you typically have a meeting, which you don't have to, but it's always nice you guys get the, the books and you, you can review them. Um, we have when the budget's distributed in February, February 8th, it would be distributed to, to the committee yep. right after the Board of Selectmen. And then I don't notice on your schedule a date for your public hearing, which would be around March 29th, which right. is what we listed it. <clears throat> it can yep. fluctuate a couple days, but in order to meet all of your other deadlines for your report and everything, you want to typically have your, your public hearing based on the charter Yep. No. Um, well, on March listen, 29th. Well, like I said, the, uh, the initial schedule was based on availability of this room. Right. So um, right. We're, I think we can uh, adjust it 
absolutely. Okay. I mean, all the other dates, I mean, that, those are fine. They were just those key ones that I think you want to, you know, yeah. focus on. Agreed. Whether you shift and remove one of your other meetings, like the March 22nd. Or add something, yeah. And add the 29th, I think, if, if you're trying to yep. not have so many meetings, which is seemed to work out very well, well last I, year. I advocated for a meeting a week, but no one went along with me, yeah. so. <laughs> I'm sure everybody is very busy. <laughs> All um, right. And it is a busy time, so. No, thank you. Yeah. Lynn, uh, Lynn, anything that you want to call out on there other than when we should move our meetings to? No, I, I don't. I mean, you've, you've got a meeting, you know, at least once a month anyway. Yeah. Uh, I know that I'm going to start scheduling the Revenue Fixed Cost Committee meetings. My first one, I'm hoping to schedule for kickoff on November 3rd or oh. around there anyway. I have it plugged on my calendar for November 3rd. I'm going to send out a invite this week to make sure everybody's available okay. um, and I'll have the worksheets forwarded to everybody beforehand so that everybody Terrific. gets a chance to review them and stuff okay yep all right anybody have any questions and do the new members know how that works with the revenue we, we did go over that okay. uh, last meeting yeah but certainly if you have any additional interacts. questions Lynn is the expert but yeah. no we did go over it last oh, okay. meeting. And yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and everything right <laughs> All right, great. Thank you, okay, Lynn. Appreciate good, thank it. Thank you. All right, well, that um, that fulfills all of our agenda items. So I guess now I would entertain a motion I for. <laughs> thank you. Anyone second? I'll second. second. All right, so a motion to adjourn made by Regina, seconded by Jen. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Fantastic. We are adjourned. Go Sox. At 820. Thank you very much. <laughs>